viver. Good boy. Okay, this video is specifically for the parents of Kane, just to uh, go over what I've done and what I would need you guys to reinforce in order for him to continue on with his obedience and possibly get him for the second session for protection work. I've concluded that he really is an established protection dog if you choose to, if you are inclined to making him one. Okay. He has a lot of great attributes towards that. And those of you who aren't parents of okay, Kane are just interested in making a protection dog, I'll make another video um, shortly after this one um, covering what I look for. And my, my factors are not the end all of all uh, of the rule book. It's just what I look for that works for me. But I would assume that it kind of, it should be, um, very much similar to a lot of other protection uh, dog trainers. So, Kane was here for obedience and um, to see if he was a protection dog uh, candidate. So let me just cover a few things. Prior to me training him, we had him on a, um, on a harness. Let me go get that harness. Good boy. So I'm not anti-harness, but what I don't really care for in harnesses are the kind that get strapped on in the back, like this one right here. This one, good boy, this one goes, will you hold still? Here you go. Goes on back like this. And once it's hooked on to the back right here, you would, you would assume, the dog would assume that he needs to pull forward because he's already going to be a few feet ahead of you. Okay, stay still. You crazy? He just, this is the playroom, so he thinks we're gonna play. Good boy. Okay, Kane. Sit. Oh, he's stuck. Sit. Good boy, stay. So it goes back here. And so he's gonna pull. Let me take this off him now. Good boy. <laughs> what you're seeing right now is it's one of the greatest factors he has for a protection dog and it has to do with drive he is overwhelmingly driven so i give him a two thumbs up double check so now instead of that i'm going to use a prong collar this right here now this is this is my lead and my lead goes on like this for good reason because it's higher up and because it's higher up whenever he pulls he'll get pulled from a higher angle instead of forward this way like this he'll be being pulled this way instead of this way so he's already so excited this is great <clears throat> everything is more or less positive reinforced regardless of how you um, envision these prong collars to be is how you use it and ultimately dogs are susceptible to your feelings if you're happy during the walk he's going to be happy too another thing is i noticed that he doesn't like things on his collar it's not the fact that it's a prong collar it's just the fact that um, maybe uh, when you guys used uh, the e-collar in the past um, like you said, he knew what it was and how it was a negative correction. So he's getting, he's getting exhausted just thinking about it. Sit. Good. Stay. So this is what I practice. I practice him trying to stay as still as possible. He understands. So he's a little bit stressed in this position. But he understands that I want him to stay still. And this is what I like you guys to, um, to reinforce. Do not tolerate him rolling all around the place even though it's fun and don't try to correct them just be patient with him and eventually he'll understand okay come here sit my hands get together like this like i'm about to pray and he understands to sit there now i'm going to go under and around stay good yes 
And that was perfect. Good boy. So from here, when I want him, to, when I want to walk him, I have my fist like this, my hand like this, with the leash backwards like this. This way, when I walk forward, this way, and he gets in front of me, I could, I could kind of wrench it this way just to correct him if he's running ahead of me. He's doing really good right now because, well, we practice this a lot. But if he gets a little bit too forward. I don't like um, active corrections, like yanking him back. He doesn't need that. Even though he's highly driven, you just need to direct him with your, with your voice. So if he gets too forward, just go, ah, ah, ah. Try not to say no, and try not to use his name in a negative connotation. So walk forward, da, 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 da. and he'll know not to go forward. Now this is what I've been practicing for the past four days. Right here, okay. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, walk. Okay, sit. Good boy. Get good. That's good boy. Another check on the protection dog list is his his loving nature. How how much he wants to please you. You can see it right here. He's trying his best. He's, he's highly motivated. He's, he's getting stressed out right now because I want him to go as slow as possible. Well, but he loves you enough to try not to be a bad dog. That's it. Good king. Yes, good boy. <laughs> good boy. Okay. So, let me take this off. Same procedure as putting it on. Sit. Hands together, good sit. Wait for him to attack. Good. Good boy. Now I don't have my treats with me and I would encourage you guys to use the treats 100% of the time. Later on we'll randomize it so he, gets to, he has to guess when the rewards are gonna be. But other than that, another great thing is this. Good boy, yes! Good boy. Tugging. This is positive. Good boy. Good cane. Good. Oh, good. Good, good. good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now, if you're wondering how to get this released, all you got to do is make this game not so fun. Close it up. Roll it in the ball. Up, up, up. Never say N-O. Never use that word during the game. This is a reward. Good. Good boy, good boy. And if you need him to release, just hold still. As still as you can. And make it boring. Good boy. When in protection, the release command is done much later. It's one of the very last things they learn because in protection, you never want them to release on their own choice. It should be under your circumstances. You make the judge, you make the call when a protection dog should release. Otherwise, they may release too early because they're worried to, it's okay, got something in his nose. They'd be too worried on uh, displeasing you, right? So that's one of the last things we ever teach them. So he's doing great right now. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Another thing I notice is the recall. Now with the recall, he's doing pretty good now. He's doing probably, I say 90% of the time he'll come to you, not 100. And that's what the remote collar is for. Remote collar is to put on is very similar, but this should only be used under positive circumstances. Good boy. Ah, uh -uh, stay. Good. When this is on, that means he's good to go. Hold on, let me reward him. Yes! Good boy! Go. Sit! Yes! Oh! Good boy! Good, good pocket. 
good parking. I haven't came up with the right word to use on the command, so I just say yes. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Good boy. The drive. The grit. The recall has been a little bit damaged because I'm not entirely sure, but a lot of times what owners will do to ruin a recall, 100% recall, and it's not our fault, it's just how we do things as humans, we trick them. Like, if we want them to go somewhere, we'll be like, come here, we'll let them go in there, and then we evade just so they can stay over there, and we lock them up. From there, they're starting to realize that recall sucks, right? So no more tricking the dog. Tricking, teasing, lying, all these things cannot be reversed because they speak a different language. So you can't explain to them, you're doing this out of love, you're doing this because. So what I suggest is following through with your command. If you need them to come, then you have to give them a consequence if they don't come. That's just the bottom line. You know better than they do. And hopefully, eventually, they will understand that it's for their greater good. And so when they do come, you have to give them a very high reward, especially if you're going to give them consequences. So mediocre, reprimanding, super high value rewards. So what I would do with this remote is I will press the vibrate to get their attention, especially Kane here, because he has extreme drive. When his drive is maxed out, he can't hear or feel anything. You can tell him to sit a hundred times, even though he would sit, if he could hear you, he wouldn't, because he can't. So the vibrate kind of snaps him out of it. Sometimes that doesn't work. Or sometimes he refuses to come inside because he still wants to play outside. So the only way to reverse that is to nick him. And the nick is a stimulate, stimulate. It feels like a flick to him. We're not trying to shock him or punish him with, a, with the e-collar. We just want to tell him, I can touch you from here. I don't want to spank you for this, but I will if you don't come because that is what I want you to do. No more games, no, no trickery to bring you inside the house. Just when you do come, you will get an extreme reward. In my case, it's gonna be a homemade chicken liver, which is awesome. Even I would eat it, but it'll be the vibrate. And if he doesn't, it'll be the nick. But now, at this point, he completely understands. Kane, come here, come here. I don't really even need to use it. But if we're outside, I may use the vibrate. Vibrate does not hurt. For him, it, it, I can press it right now. You can see his expression. Good boy. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Good. And then high reward. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. And that's pretty much what I've been using using for him to understand recall. So more or less, I don't need to use this at all. This is only if he sees a prey and he's so prey driven, he's gonna dart out. Or if I see someone coming along, I wanna press the vibrate. If you're uncomfortable with it, then I don't know what to say. Then go get yourself a pit bull and find out for yourself. <laughs> but. But when you have a hard dog like this, the e-collar is one of the greatest tools because just good boy, just like any, just like most people that are afraid of these dogs, you need to have 100% control of them. And a lot of times your fear is induced where they will have zero freedom. They'll be on the leash all the time. And it's not fun for you to be afraid. and It's not fun for him to be on a leash 100% of the time. You need to be able to have full control all the time, and that's what the e-collar does. So, 
Yeah, I don't think I need to explain any further. But this is Kane. I'm very excited to work with him. And I hope this video was helpful for you. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.